tonight's shock election result must have come as a surprise, even to the party itself. Who's the rude boy? Where you going? You know, I hope for your sake that laptop doesn't fall into wrong hands. You didn't download those pictures. I need the address of the Prime Minister's door. Easy. Basic hacking. Who's the posh boy? Come to make you an offer on the laptop. Somebody apart from you wants this laptop in a hurry. Who is it? I need you to find out where this black kid lives. The curfew's more popular than we hoped, Richard. <laughs> Good news for Richard Wheeler's government with three more defections to the Democratic Consensus Party and opinion polls now suggesting that more than 80% of the people support the national curfew. In light of the rout of the traditional parties in the election, whom do you now consider your primary opposition? <laughs> Clearly the media. <laughs> you made a lot of wild election promises, Prime Minister on Health, Asylum, Beggars, Law and Order, Nadine Chandler, Viewpoint News. When can we expect to see policies? Well, Nadine, we've just introduced a curfew, which is an extremely popular measure. What other extremely popular measures should we anticipate? I'll be announcing radical new policies later today. But you promised immediate action, and it will take months to draft new laws, go through parliamentary procedures. And do you really have a mandate, Mr Wheeler? A small minority voted you in. Do you really have a mandate for anything at all? Rome wasn't built in a day, Tim. <laughs> that Nadine woman's a pain. We've got drafts of laws. We could have half a dozen in front of the house by next week. Now, what I think we need to do is follow up the curfew and the internet with something equally as popular. Street begging, maybe. Why don't we bring the enabling act forward? Well, the risk with that is that people think it goes too far too soon. Well, now's the best time. While they're all on the back foot. It's all drawn up and ready, isn't it? Sure. Well, then. Come on. Don't stop. Take it inside, please, sir. Yeah. What do you reckon it is? I ain't got a clue, have I? I just thiefed it. Put that phone. Let's What do you reckon it's worth? Where do you want to meet? Yeah, I know it. Right. <laughs> ah, Mr. Wheeler. Yeah. Okay. Uh, both my partner and I voted for you. 
Thank you very much. Look at you. <laughs> you look gorgeous. This will have to be very quick. Just change size, Melissa. <clears throat> you hate this, don't you? Nonsense. She loves having a picture taken. Next time it'll be 200, then three. People like you should take better care of the kids. Well, believe me, he'll be chained to his textbooks from now on. Or there are kids out there who could do with being locked up. I'm all for that. Kids who are really Tarek. Oh, whatever, Dad. Do you think throwing Tarek in a police cell overnight's gonna stop Steve Brody? What's Stephen Brody got to do with this? Who, who's Steve Brody? He's the guy that jumped me and nicked my stuff. Good. He'll go down for two years just for breaking his probation plus ABH, if you press charges. Give me a statement, send him down. What you need to be doing is concentrating on your studies. He's a thug, vicious little psycho. You don't want your friends knocking around the likes of him now, do you? No. So give me the statement, then. The thing is, when you find him, there'll be this laptop that he nicked. Laptop? Maybe I could do a deal with you. I'll help you nick Steve, but only if you don't do tarot for the stolen laptop. Max, this isn't a good idea. Listen, you give me that statement and then... Yes. Hello, Mac? No. I'll see what I can do. Um, can I speak to Mac? Let's see Melissa. what you can do. Tarek's in the clear. I ain't giving you nothing. I'm sorry, love. Uh, Max, can I... I ain't got time for this. I'm gonna go and find Tarek, and you can come if you want. Or are you gonna arrest me again? All right, all right. Take me there. I can't go out the front door, though. What are you talking about? There are men outside on the street watching the house. The silver Audi. Been there since yesterday. Just drive away, I'll meet you in the next street. You should start at the beginning. Well, I've been down the nick all night answering questions. I'm kind of over it now.
You ain't exactly Steve's best mate, right? I'm the one that sent him down. Listen, you should probably stay out of sight when we get there, yeah? Sweat, does it? Living on the edge. Good girl. So what are you prepared to pay for it then? See, cos... always had a thing for posh birds, man. And I reckon you love a bit of rough, don't you? Eh? Is that what you want for it then? Uh, take more than a few minutes of your next particular princess. OK. Whatever you want. We want your car. Fine. Nah. <laughs> now that was too quick. See? Silver spoon. Lovely flash motor, will he? No questions asked. What does Daddy do, then? Actually, little boy... Give us a car, man. All right, Steve. Branching out into the motor straight now, are we? Yeah, bitch. Let's go.
You're under arrest. Oscar Sierra 114 location check. Oscar Sierra 114 location confirmed. Confirm ambulance required. Request So what the hell are you running away for? I called you and you wouldn't speak to me. I thought we were going to do this together. Why is it so important? It ain't even your computer anyway. What have you got going with Spears? That is none of your business. I was just trying to sort this out. Yeah, well, so was I. Trivial matter. I was hoping I wouldn't have to bother you. My laptop's been stolen. Where it is? Yes. But there's some urgent cleaning up. Very urgent. systems are back up and running. Oh, Pete, you stop. The new platform's still a bit shaky. Was the crash anything to do with the Melissa Wheeler search? Mm, I can't tell. But the firewalls around the government site have become, like, majorly impenetrable. So what are you saying? You're not skilled enough to hack into those emails? No, I couldn't do that before I'm the cloud. I'm just kidding. Down, I'm just kidding. Let's see if anything stopped in the last few days. Hmm. That one there, look. 60, 70 emails a day, usually. Nothing since Thursday. It's receiving, but it's not sending. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because it got stolen. Can you tell what the processor was? Mobile, I think. Laptop? It could be. Nice. I'll be back. And I'll get you breakfast. Bring some food as well, man. I'm starving. I ain't nothing but half back at Christmas morning. Yeah. Oh, no, man. 
You don't know where Steve is, do you? Now listen, Tarek. Uh, Max, um, someone to see you. Oh, I'll be there soon. My name's Nadine Chandler. I'm a journalist. I'm just on my way out, you know. I think it's in your interest to talk to me. I was wondering what you could tell me about the death of Stephen Brody. Because apparently the police aren't going to be investigating it. I don't get you. Surely they must be investigating. W what's this about? There's some witness to murder today. What? Right, Max? But it turns out word came down from, well, the very top, that this is a matter of Wait. national security. How do you know about it? My boss got a call from a police officer, a man with a conscience, yeah. turns out. Uh, Max, what, are you all right? I notice the silver Audi isn't outside at the moment. Do you know who they are? Are you deaf? What's so special about this laptop? There was a girl there. Who was she? Max. Yes, Dad, I'm fine. You saw a murder, and you're fine. Hmm? I don't blame you for not trusting me. It shows you're bright. Maybe I should call this police officer. He can't speak to you. The national security thing, and he's got a mortgage. But you won't send me away. You need my help. Just give us a few minutes, yeah? Who's that? Melissa, it's Max. What do you want, Max? Listen up. Completely crazy! I haven't even told her who you are yet. I haven't told her anything. Oh, what, and am I supposed to be grateful? You need to check your priorities. Why is this laptop so important to you? It's photographs, all right? Photographs I don't want to be made public. Is that all? What do you mean, all? How dirty can your dirty pictures be? Melissa, we saw someone killed. I'm guessing your boyfriend took He's care of you. He's not my boyfriend. What are you talking about? What's it worth, do you reckon? Maybe a couple more dead street trash. Well, come on, give me a quote. Get out. Get out. Melissa! Melissa! This is harassment. Melissa! I don't know who the hell you are. If you take one step closer to me, you will be drowning in lawsuits. And so will you. She's lying. And she's Melissa Wheeler. What's on this laptop, then? I don't know. Is it hers? No, it's not hers. Can you get it? It would be very worth your while. They killed Stephen Brody, Max. Maybe this laptop could keep you alive. If you get it, give it to me. We get all this out there in public. It will keep you... told you to go away. I was about to get it back. They were about to give it to me until your moronic gorillas plowed in. And now he's gone to the press. They came round just now asking all sorts of questions. What did you tell them? So that's it, isn't it? There'll be pictures of us all over the TV in days. 
And then the tabloids, all pixelated, obviously. You'll have to deal with her, John. Don't let this woman destroy me. It'll destroy you too. I'll deal with her. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. Speculation increases about an announcement expected later tonight from the Prime Minister's office. Laws on street begging and asylum are top of the new government's agenda. Meanwhile, there have been yet more defections during the course of the day. Five more Labour MPs and six Conservatives announced their decision to join the Democratic Consensus Party in the wake of the success of the youth curfew. The Prime Minister, Richard Wheeler, is expected to give the police new powers to bring criminals to justice. Those who threaten the safety of ordinary citizens, he said, cannot expect to hide from the law. Still find the place. Pool pies. I'm a Muslim. Think we're for fortune, bro. You're gonna give us a car. You don't know where Steve is, do you? He ain't answering his phone. This is heavy stuff, you know, bro. You ain't gonna get a car for it. Nah, man, we don't get it. That bro was gonna swap it. Maybe it's worth even more. And Steve's off looking for a better deal. I'm telling you, these are dangerous people. Dangerous, bruv. You are such a pussy, you know that. They killed Steve Tarek, all right? What? He got in their way, so they snapped his neck. So just forget about the car. <laughs> There's this journalist. She wants us to give it to her. Tarek, I think we should. We can make some noise. They won't come after us. Ah, oh, man. So just forget about the car, bruv. No what? They was following you. You led them to us, man. It's oh. your fault Steve's dead, man. It's your fault. Oh. Oh. What's wrong with you? Oh. Oh. What happened, man? It was when you ran off. Look, Steve was just making sure you got away. I mean, he was protecting me. Grovelled in thanks at some point. Since I saved your neck. You'd have hung me out to dry if you had to, John. Tossed me to the howling wolves. You know I still might. Sorry, really matters to you, this computer. 
She thinks it's in the pictures you took. Am I right? Melissa. How do you know my name? Come on, you're a celebrity. What are you, an autograph hunter? No, sorry. I've got some information for you about that laptop. The one turret, Mick. Go inside. So, uh, when did you last see Max? When he brought a reporter to my door. What, he's going to plaster it all over the press? I suppose that makes you very happy. Which journalist did he hook? Just tell me what your information is, I'll get out. Whose laptop is it? You're a journalist, aren't you? It's got to look like a journalist. Where is it? How about you tell me whose it is, and I'll tell you where it is. What difference does that make? It makes a difference to how much it's worth. Not to me. Okay. Okay. It's John Spears' computer. Now tell me where it is. Actually, I don't know, love. Nice place. It's hard to accept defeat. I sympathize, I really do. Two parties have dominated our lives for over a century. Two parties. Three, if we're kind. Mm -mm. Too smug. Two parties. My defeat of them has been a debacle. I'm guessing I don't want to hear this. A journalist is on the case. That policeman must have spoken to her. Make sure they throw the book at him. That's already been taken care of, Richard. The problem's the reporter. Are you threatening me, Mr. Spears? I could tell you it's national security, but... Uh, why you don't you think? Here's your chance to make it big. But even if it cost... Well, whatever it cost, I couldn't blame you. No, I'm not threatening you. I'm seducing you. I know ambition when I see it, Nadine. And then there's this story. Bit of a scandal, yeah, maybe. Flash in the pan, though. Or oh, there's a career. A life in political journalism. Where you need your sources high up. And you need to be close to the centers of power. And it's that sort of career. You know he mugged me, innit? He messed up my face. You like your training. She told you what it was all about. And apparently, she got kinky with some guy and they took some snapshots. Steve won't kill for no snapshots, bro. No. I guess not. Maybe we should call this journalist. Of course. She'll keep us safe, yeah? Yeah. If she tells the world what all the excitement's about, these guys ain't gonna be happy, are they? That's something we could do. Something, you know, for Steve. Steve, give me this phone. 
She used it to phone this woman. Keep them confused, Max. This is my phone, bro. There ain't no confusion. Steve nicked it off me. Fancy, huh? Not a journalist, man. Gee. Where with the car? She'll be here soon. The journalist. What's she gonna pay for? It ain't money we need, man. I told you already, we need safety. This is a turning point for you, Nadine. I know. But hey, don't worry, you'll learn to live with yourself. Now, tell me where we go to get my property. This is Max's phone. I'm not answering it could be because I can't hear it or knowing my recent luck because someone's nicked it, so you wouldn't get to speak to me anyway. But there'll be a beep, so you might as well give it a try. chat with your journalist. She's very friendly. Really? What did you offer? Oh, you know, the inside track. Me. <laughs> She's gonna be perfect. You killed him, man. Which one was it? The big guy. When they beat up last night. Terry, you know this is the right thing to do, isn't it? Here, you sit. I want proof you've destroyed the photographs. You're not putting me through this again. You should have thought about that in the first place, you naughty little girl. Worried about the photographs. Like this one, for example. You can delete them if you like. I want all the copies. There aren't any. You really think I'd be stupid enough to leave pictures like that on my hard drive, hmm? Do you have any idea of what I've been through over the last few days? Oh, come on now, no hard feelings. Oh, here they come. Got you scared to death. I wonder what that could be. Must be something really important. Keep your eyes on the laptop. Max. I 
come we should still get some money. It's worth a whole car, you know what I mean? Why the hell did you do that? If something on that laptop can dis- You know... You think your father is such a saint? Well, he's not, Melissa. He really isn't a saint. Don't worry, Nadine. The deal's still on. They switched it. You're going to tell this gentleman where I can find it. Pick him up. I'm Nadine Chandler, and tonight I'm here at 10 Downing Street, speaking exclusively to Prime Minister Richard Wheeler. Prime Minister, mm. how do you build representative government on the wreckage of an entire political system? <laughs> I wouldn't call it wreckage, Nadine. What would you call it? It's very difficult to accept defeat. Believe me, I sympathize. Two parties have dominated our lives for well over a century. But we can't let embittered voices from our past hold us back. Hold you back from what? Hold us back from fulfilling our promises. Hold you back but from fulfilling which promises in particular, Prime Minister? I think what we have to do now is abundantly clear. It's very regrettable, really, and I wish there was another way. Prime Minister. Let me finish. I know what we have to do now. We want to bring in the changes we've promised as quickly as possible. But you know, the current political process is simply too slow. It's too open to abuse from those who feel humiliated. Now, tomorrow, we're going to pass a law enabling us to suspend, for the moment, normal parliamentary procedure, House of Lords, second readings, all of that. For the moment? Indeed, for the moment. I believe that this is what's needed at this critical hour. I really do. I believe that what the British people want from me 
is a radical, decisive and effective government. Aggressive lobbying has continued throughout the day for tonight's vote on the Enabling Act in the House of Commons. Yeah, I'll help you, bro. We're in. You know, she might be the mother of all parliaments, but she's long overdue for a mercy killing. I told you not to cross me. We've got a special guest, Melissa Wheeler, the daughter of the new Prime Minister. I've got emails from your dad to John Spears. Read them for yourself. How do you plan to bury this before this evening's vote? Actually, Richard, there is one thing. If you're interested in finding more about this programme, you can visit channel4.com slash lastrites. Next up, the story of a Daniel Defoe novel. Election result must have come as a surprise, even to the party itself. Who's the rude boy? A friend of mine, isn't it? Where you go? You know, I hope for your sake that laptop doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Why is this laptop so important to you? It's photographs. Photographs I don't want to be made public. You can delete them if you like. You really think I'd be stupid enough to leave pictures like that on my hard drive? Hmm? Somebody apart from you wants this laptop in a hurry. Who is it? I need you to find out where this black kid lives. <laughs> Curfew's more popular than we hoped, Richard. What other extremely popular measures should we anticipate? Why don't we bring the enabling act forward? Well, the risk with that is that people think it goes too far too soon. Well, now's the best time, while they're all on the back foot. They killed Steve Tarek, all right? He got in their way, so they snapped his neck. <laughs> run! Max, run! If something on that laptop can destroy you, I'm not going to stand in its way. Find someone to hide. Your father is such a saint. Well, he's not, Melissa. He really isn't a saint. Aggressive lobbying has continued throughout the day for tonight's vote on the Enabling Act in the House of Commons. At the same time, there have been more defections from both Labour and the Conservatives to the Democratic Consensus Party. Prime Minister, I gather that a number of significant figures from previous governments are likely to appear in your new cabinet. I want to use valuable experience from both sides of the so-called political divide. This is a time for unity, not recriminations. Consensus. Look, the Enabling Act is simply a means of speeding up the process of change and is categorically not setting any precedent. There's no need to be alarmist, John. British democracy is safe in my hands. Just gonna make some coffee, hmm? I think you have scullery maids to do that for you. <laughs> Oh, they'll be able to cover this up when I go on telly, won't they? Silly, really. I slipped in the shower to get my champagne. Okay. You're not going to dead. This chat shows a great opportunity for us to show a softer side. You sure you want to do it? Yeah. Started to get into the idea of being famous. 
If your mother was alive, she'd do this kind of thing, but uh, well, not this program in particular. Mm -hmm. But you're my first lady now. And the media's going to take much more of an interest, I'm afraid. But you're funny. And you're clever, and you're gorgeous. No, I'm not your first lady, Dad. But I believe in you. And I am so proud of you. And I trust you. You just be yourself. Hmm? You'll be great. Hmm. And the whole world is going to love you. <laughs> hmm? If this serious, we should go to the police. Tarrant was about to give it back, but then Melissa just said, run. There must have been something. There must have been some reason. I ran. I just ran. Me and Tarrant hid for a bit, and then he just gave me the laptop, and then he ran, so we got split up. Why did you disappear and not even bother to call me? I don't think you're paying attention. This is deep. I shouldn't even be dragging you into this. Well, why are you here, then? I need somewhere to hide. I told you to stand up straight. So you claimed your right to wear skank clothes? Max needs our help. Max needs our help. All right, well, this is how it is, yeah? This is a collective, yeah? Yeah? So if you want our help, you're going to have to contribute something yourself. Bro, are you going to help me or not? Because I ain't got time for all this intellectual cut and thrust. Yeah, I'll help you, bro. John Spears' laptop will do nicely. This has got nothing to do with you, man. I'm just looking for somewhere to hide. Come on. Gotta be a little bit curious, eh? There's a password. That's all right. Passwords are easy. I used to be a patient man. You have to be in politics. Plant your seeds and wait for them to grow. 
God knows I've waited. People think it's all happened suddenly. Of course it hasn't. I've been very, very patient. It's funny, yeah. The very moment when it was coming together, the fireworks were going off. The self-satisfied pundits were pretending they predicted it. And then you come running along and threaten it all. You also have to be ruthless in politics. To get things done, you have to be ready to be disliked. You have to be able to recognize who's dispensable. Are you following this? Okay, so what do you think we're looking for? Maybe this ain't our business, man. Come on, what are you so scared of? Well, maybe it's private. Not anymore, is it? <laughs> Lissy. We're in. Kid. Just tell us your mate's number so we can give him a call. And you can go home. Is it really this important to you? You see, what's happened is Max has realized the laptop is worth something, and um, you, you're pretty worthless. Chalk and cheese, you and Max. The other one, he was probably your friend, the one who's dead. Give me Max's number! Oh. Come on, Max, you must have some kind of inkling as to what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Listen, you ain't gotta go looking for every kilobyte, all right? It's just some photographs. What kind of photographs? How dirty are we talking? Trying spears with some hookers. That could be pretty damaging. It's not exactly family values, is it? How stupid are you? Lissy. Melissa's in the photos. That's a tabloid feeding frenzy. So we shouldn't then, yeah? Max, I've met this girl, yeah? She's the kind who grows up thinking the world's there to serve her. I'm sure she can take care of herself. I'm telling you no. Emails. Let's look through his emails. Here we go. RW. I reckon that's the PM himself. Video mail. Have you seen the polls? We're going to do it, John. Congratulations on all your hard work. Turnout's expected to be less than 40%. You know, she might be the mother of all parliaments, but she's long overdue for a mercy killing. What the hell does that mean? It means we're in business. Try sent meal. Here's one. Richard, I thought about what we should prioritize. Uh, we should go for a curfew on youth within the next few days. I think it'll be popular and should avoid controversy. Uh, the special unit will be ready immediately, but uh, I don't think we should make that public. Special unit? Secret police, more like. What's this? One more thing, John. If the majority is big enough, we should try to push the EA in the first week. What's EA? Enabling it. Yeah, suspends the usual parliamentary procedure. They're voting on that tonight. Yeah. Our time is coming, Richard. But more drastic policies need a year to 18 months at least. Let's get the public trust first. And then... Who knows? More drastic? What the hell have they got in store for us? You know, John, we're witnessing the last gasps of what the 20th century called democracy. But it's not the 20th century anymore. This is it, John. Today, it's the air. With any luck, general elections will be a thing of the past. Right, Terry, let's get this over and done with. Keep 
be a press release. It's in the rest out as attachments. E-lists, national press. Television. Yeah, this is bring down the government stuff. Max. Tarek, bruv. Where are you? Tarek? Where are you? Listen, I'm scared, man. Just bring the laptop, please. What's going on? Are you all right? <laughs> Tarek. Tarek. I can't take it anymore, man. Tarek, just tell me where you are. Listen, I'm sorry for acting like such a puss. I'm sorry. All right, Max, I'm sorry. I'm not playing games, Max. This has gone on long enough. Ah! All right. Ah! All right. Tell me where. His mother's house. Well, Max, at least, seems like a sensible young man. I want you guys to come up with some names, important people you think we should send this stuff to. Sorry. Hey. What are you doing? This stuff's gold dust, I'm man. I'll get my mate on safe, OK? But you understand how important this is? I don't care about your big, bad world. Oh, don't be such an idiot, man. Get off! Max! You okay? Yeah. It's all right, Mrs. Abdullah. Tarek's coming home now. Interesting. I couldn't give a toss about what's on your stupid computer. Missy wasn't any help then. Who? I'm sure I don't need to tell you to stay out of my way. In fact, make me think you don't exist at all. And then you, or anyone you know, has nothing to be afraid of. By the way, you probably think that Melissa was trying to save your life last night. It's nothing to do with you. You see, it's just all a game to her. You don't count for anything, trust me. She was just trying to get her own back at me. She loves to torment me. Okay. Enjoy your life.
Terror. Sorry about Steve, yeah? This afternoon, the cellar. Have you ever seen it? What was all that about last night then? I mean, your boyfriend reckons you just play mind games with him. Is that true? Oh, for God's sake, Max, he's not my boyfriend. No. Of course not. Because I wondered, you know, why it was we ran like that. Maybe it would have ended no different. There's me thinking Melissa's trying to save my skin when, when actually, we're just caught up in the middle of something. You and him winding each other up. He hit me. How's Tarek? He's not good. Sorry. You know what this is all about, don't you? I mean, what's on a computer? No. Well, I do. Look, I saved this. It's about your dad. It goes all the way up to him. Steve, Tarek. All this is because of your dad. No, you don't know that. Yes, I do. I've got emails from your dad to John Spears. Read it for yourself. It's all about politics and that. It's all why this has happened. I don't care, Max. I'm not interested. Yeah, I suppose Steve don't mean much to you. And what's it to you what happens to Tarek? That'll be my cab. Yeah, go on. It's gonna be all right. Got your nice flat. Your little parties. TV shows. Before you know it, you'll be dating some celeb. Daddy will see you, all right? You can't talk to me like that. I won't bother you no more. Tell me. I'll be happy to listen. Where's the CD? Hey! What have you done with the copies? Who are you? See who you think you are. You know who I am, Don. Right. I'm bringing the police. You go right ahead, Don. You call the police. I told you not to cross me. I'll you. Look, I'm telling you, I don't know anything about a CD. See, I know that's not true, Max. Now, it would be so much quicker and easier if you just told me where it is.
Hello? Open the door. Now. Who the hell's that? I'm calling the police. Go ahead. Face the wall! No! Go. Don't touch her, man. Yeah, all right. But you save yourself a lot of grief if you just tell me where the copy is. I, I'm not just saying this, but I don't know what you're talking about. First time on telly, isn't it? I bet you'd be doing loads of this sort of thing. Play your cards right, you could be the Diana of our times. It isn't, is it? You ain't gonna find them. <laughs> Must be cool, your dad being one of the most powerful men in the world. Yeah. Guess being the Prime Minister's daughter gets you into all the right parties. Right? Film premieres, fashion shows. You'll be stepping out with a movie star before we can say, How's the Parliament? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do this. It's just first time nerves, love. You'll be fine. I can't do this trivial rubbish. Of course you can. No, I can't go to the parties and the photo shoots, okay? Not knowing what I know. I saw some video emails today from my father to John Spears. Do you know who he is? He's the main organiser for the Democratic Consensus Party. These emails show that the government... Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. OK, we can go to movie news. No, no, OK, look. It's all here, OK? The government. My father's government think that democracy is sick beyond repair and they want to abolish it. They want to do away with elections, and that is what the Enabling Act is all about. This what? There's a vote in Parliament tonight, and that's what it's all about. To vote whether there may never be votes again. Kind of. Sounds radical, Melissa. Yeah, well, I just thought all the people who voted and all the people who didn't had a right to know. So you don't get on with your dad, then? I love my dad, but there's right and there's wrong. And this plan to abolish elections, that's got to be wrong. You gave it to her.
Just pray to God. You never have reason to come near my son again. No, just deal with it. Christ. How do you plan to bury this before this evening's vote? Richard, there is one thing. 